Hi, I'm Tom, amateur radio call sign N8FDY, and today we're going to talk about another multimeter. And what is the one we're going to talk about today? Triplet 9055. This is a little different because it's a 4,000 count meter, but it has light and sound measurement, which is a little unusual. And it also measures relative humidity, and uh, it also will measure all the time the, the room temperature. So, and it comes with thermocouple so you can measure another temperature at the same time. So let's see what's in the box. We got the manual, and it uh, covers everything you need to cover. We have a thermocouple, and an adapter for the thermocouple, and we have the uh, test leads, which are uh, plastic, typical. And let's see, we have the meter itself. The uh, switch goes all the way around because there's so many functions on this meter that it just goes all the way around back to off. To turn on the backlight, you have to hold the hold button down for a few seconds. But annoyingly, it keeps it in the hold mode, so then you have to push the hold button quickly to turn off hold. So the Sekonic says it's 800 lux, and this says 784. How much light's coming in here? We'll hold, take a look. This guy is the opposite. You push it to take the reading. So there we go. The Sekonic says 840. The triplet says 824. Oh, no, triplet says 829. I do not have a sound meter. Well, I have one. I can't find it. Uh, of course, I haven't been able to find it for um, 10 years, so I think I must have loaned it to somebody. And I forgot who I loaned it to, but now I don't have one. So this, I can't tell you how close this is or not. And you do notice that it's showing the relative humidity, and it's showing you the room temperature. This button here will let you change the room temperature from uh, centigrade to Fahrenheit back again. This is a 400 count meter. has a basic DC accuracy of 1% plus 4 digits in the least significant digit. It has a hold function. It has a relative or delta function. Unique to this set of meters, it can measure light. It has a sound level meter from 35 to 100 decibels. C weighted, fast response. It can measure the ambient temperature and the relative humidity, and it displays those both all the time. It also has a thermocouple, so you can take other measurements. It comes with a included 9-volt battery. Our first measurement is 2.5 volts. Actually, it's 2.5005, according to the Keithley. And the triplet says it's 2.501, so that's not too bad. Now, since it's a 4,000 count meter, as soon as we get over 4,000, it shifts over to the right and we lose some precision. So that's 5.00 or 01. It can't make up its mind. And there is your 7.51. And there's your 10.03 volts. Here's a table of all the DC voltages I tested. All the voltages met the specifications. But as you can see, the specifications are pretty wide. It is uh, much less accurate specifications than the average in this group of meters. Now we'll take a look at the AC volts. Just for an example, I'm showing you two volts off my arbitrary waveform generator. And to make sure it's 2 volts, I'm measuring it with my uh, Fluke 289. And then we have what the triplet thinks it is. This is the table of the AC volts I measured. 
This is not a true RMS meter. It is an averaging meter. So the square wave voltage is not what a RMS meter would show. It could not read the one millivolt value, but all the other values it could read were within specification according to the manual. The accuracy specifications are less accurate than the meters in this group. We have 0.89 microamps and the meter reads it as 0.9 microamps. Here we have 9.21 microamps and the meter reads it at 9.2. Here we have 99 microamps and the here we have 131.8 microamps and the meter reads it at 131.9. Here we have 1 milliamp and the meter reads it as 1 milliamp. We have 9.98 milliamps and the meter reads 9.93. Here we have 99.4 milliamps and the meter says 99.4. Well, good job for the currents. Too bad the specs say it's going to be worse than this, but this is the table of the current measurements. This is not a true RMS meter, so the AC square wave current is not what an RMS meter would show. All the other values are within specifications, and the accuracy specification for the microamps is average for this group of meters, but the accuracy specification for the milliamps and amps are below average. Now we're going to test some resistors. First thing we do is short out the leads to see what the lead resistance is. And you see they're shorted. And the meter says 0 ohms, which I know is not right because these leads are about 0.2 ohms. So we'll see what happens. This is a 1.004 resistor. And the meter reads it as 1.1. 1 .1. Oh, now it read it, it. The meter reads it anywhere between 0.9 and 1.1. 1 .1. It just floats back and forth. This is a 10.007 resistor. And the meter is fluctuating between 10.1 to about 10.3. Here is a 100.069 resistor and it's coming out as 100.0. Here is a 1.0001 kilo ohm resistor, and this reads it as 0.998 kilo ohms. Here is 9.97 mega ohms, and it reads it as 9.96 mega ohms. Here is the table of all the resistance values I measured. All the values were within the specifications stated in the manual. The accuracy specifications of this meter is below average for this group of meters. Now we're going to measure some capacitors. The leads have a 0.22 nanofarad capacitance, stray capacitance, so we're going to zero that out with the relative button. So it zeroes that out. Now we can read the capacitors. Here is a 100 picofarad, which would be a 0.1 nanofarad, and this reads it as 0.07 nanofarad. Here's a 1.006 nanofarad capacitor, and the meter reads it as 0.72. Here's a 9.921 nanofarad capacitor, and the meter reads it as 9.52. Here is a 99.51 nanofarad capacitor, and it reads it as 100.3. Here is a table of all the capacitance values I measured. The 10 picofarad and the 100 and 1,000 microfarad capacitors couldn't be read. The ones that could be read were within the specifications as stated in the manual. The specifications of the accuracy stated in the manual are less accurate than most meters in this group. The diode test function only works with uh, regular diodes, doesn't work with LEDs. Won't light them, won't show a forward voltage, but works on a Schottky diode. 
It works on a small signal diode, and it works on a rectifier diode. All right, let's try continuity. It does not latch. You get to the battery through a battery access door that has two non-captive screws. And of course, I lost one of the screws already. To replace the fuses, you must disassemble the meter. You have to remove six self-tapping screws. Here's a close-up of where the fuses go. Let's look at the pros and cons of this meter. Well, the good parts of this meter, it's under $100. Almost all the measurements I made met the specifications in the manual. It measures light, it measures sound, and it has a three-year warranty from a U.S. company, Triplet. Well, the not-so-good things about this meter. There's no indication of third-party safety testing. Most specifications were below average accuracy for this group of 6,000 count meters. And you must disassemble the meter to change the fuses. In conclusion, if you want to measure some audio, sound pressure level, uh, I'd get a sound pressure level meter. If you wanted to measure some light, I'd get a light meter. If you wanted to measure current resistance capacitance, I'd get a different meter. So uh, it is a novelty, but that's about it. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't even have bought this to test. But you don't know what you don't know. So next up, we're going to have, uh, a, I think, a meter you I can recommend. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, until then, this is Tom, N8FDY, saying uh, 73, and take it easy.